Good morning, good morning, good morning. Would you like to stand up? We're going to praise the Lord pretty soon. You want to get up and give Him glory. Thank you for all of you coming this morning. We want to praise God for His faithfulness to us. Amen. Thank you for watching over us, Lord, by your mighty power. Thank you for your love and goodness. We ask you to bless this today. We ask you to bless the worship team. We ask you to bless everyone that walks in these doors, that we might worship you in spirit and truth, proclaim Jesus Christ, and see the mighty Holy Spirit move among the people for the glory of God. Thank you for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
gathered in this place to honor you. To worship you in spirit and in truth. Jesus, we are here.
strength is in your name for you alone can save you will deliver me yours is the victory who shall I
sings the war song of the land. All of heaven sings the war song of the land. All of heaven sings the war song of the All of heaven sings the war song of the land. All of heaven sings the war song of the land. All of heaven sings the war song of the land. All of heaven sings the war song of the land.
very light took upon itself all our guilt and shame hanging on a cross all the world he loved with his breath To the one who endured all the shame of the cross, to the Lamb who was slain as atonement for us, to the Son who overcame all the power of death.
that glory. You deserve all the praise. You are worthy of it all, Lord. Praise you, Lord. You, you are the Alpha and Omega, Lord. You are awesome. Thank you, Lord. Sing it.
brought you forth from your mother's womb. I breathe life inside you. I ordained that you would be alive now, and I have kept you. I have kept you safe in me, and I want you to know that I am the Omega, and I will complete what I've begun in you. I will complete what I have begun in you. You will not fall short. You will not waver, not because of your faithfulness, but because of mine, because I have pursued you from the day you came out of your mother's womb. And you shall be my glorious ones in this day. So thank you, Lord. You will complete what is impossible for us to do. And we thank you. Let's continue to just lift our voices to him. a shout of praise right now. Give him all of your voices.
darkest night You are closer like no one known you as a father known you as a friend I have We just wait on you right now. I believe you poured out your spirit upon many people. And I pray, Lord, that you will be blessed, Lord, as we wait on you, Holy Spirit. Sometimes we do this, sometimes we don't, but I feel right now we're just supposed to wait on the Lord for a few moments. If you have a word from God, you're free to share it. We'll just wait. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you, beloved. I am turning the tide, turning the tide. Amen. Yes. So, enemy. so remember what my word says. He has been defeated. I yes. encourage you today, beloved. I am turning the tide. Amen. 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 Amen.
There is a time in heaven, there's a time on the earth. They are not succinct, they are not alive. But the Lord said that this day I have started to align the heavenly timing with earth. Because of the high times of God. Amen. That's exactly what uh, Chris Reed said. The angels have come to help us do it. Amen. Amen. We are in sync with the throne. It's God's setting us up for it. There's a few more. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. And then I, I had a vision during worship where he opened up heaven. There was a door. And this time, he opened up the door, because he's the initiator of love, right? So he opened up the door, and then Revelation 3.21, To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. And he invited us up into the heavenlies today to worship him Amen. in heaven. Amen. I just Amen. thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 I was in the throne room with other people, yes. and we were praising and dancing with white and gold flags for Jesus. Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you that we have robes that have been washed. Yes. White robes, Lord, purchased by your blood, Jesus. Amen. From heaven down into earth and then opened up above our church. It's always, my visions are always like above our church. It's opening a portal from heaven and earth to be connected. And in the in the um, in it coming down were battle angels and then praising angels and worshipers and they were just it was a tornado. You know, tornadoes destroy, but this one was coming to bring life. And, and with all the warring, warring angels, before them were the dancers and the praisers, so so much of what was going on today felt it because they were here yes. and came to the scripture. And the scripture was um, Jeremiah 46, 3. Prepare your shields, both large and small, and march out for battle. Harness the horses, mount the steeds, take your position with helmets on, Polish your spears, put on your armor. What do I see? They are terrified. They are re retreating. Their warriors are defeated. They flee in haste without looking back. And there is terror in every side, declares the Lord. Amen. To his enemies, right? Yep. The Lord's taken over. Might as well get used to it. Go ahead. Read it out, so go loud. Jesus paid a high price for us, we know that. The blood was shed. And he said in Psalm 103, he said, as far as the east is from the west, you can find the north pole and the south pole, but you can't find the east and the west poles. They don't exist because our sins are forgiven. Yeah. And so I feel like the Holy Spirit is here to break condemnation off of you. Yes. And God is saying it's the season of seeing what he's doing and hearing what he's doing. So if you're over-focusing on your sin and what you've done wrong, he's saying, let it go. Yes. Let it go. He's here to break condemnation. And this is the word of the Lord from Micah 7, 18. Where is there another God like you who pardons the guilt of his remnant, his ecclesia, overlooking the sins of his special people. You will not stay angry with them forever. You delight in showing your unfailing love. So Lord, break condemnation off of us. Let us stop focusing on ourselves. If you need to repent, he's faithful and just to forgive you, but let it go so you can hear and see what he's doing. Amen. Amen. Condemnation is something we all have to literally be aware of and say, no way, Jose. The Holy Spirit will convict you and tell you what you did wrong and say, you want me to help you? The devil will just say, it's, you, all, you messed up and leave you with looking at yourself instead of the Lord. So uh, discernment there, but we have to overcome that particular spirit for sure. Amen? Anybody yes, else? Yes, yes. Well... God is doing the deep work of yes. burrowing deep inside of us to create this firm foundation. Yes. In Him, we are the rock and the steadfast ones. 
that no matter what comes our way, yes. that the Spirit yes. of the Lord is overcoming in and through us to be strong in Him. Amen. 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 Yes. Well, Amen. praise the Lord. We're, thank you, worship team. You guys did wonderful as usual. Amen. Yeah. Now, I heard a rumor from my wife, and I'm looking for Linda. Where is Linda Hughes? Well, stand up, Linda. You're waving. Oh, there you are. <laughs> they had to point you to out. So you had a testimony about healing? Yeah, come on. Come on up, yeah. Is that true? Is it you? <laughs> Testimony about healing. Okay. All right. Well, let her rip. Praise God, first of all. Um, a lot of you, I want to thank the many that knew what I was going through and have been praying. So I'll back up a little bit. A few years ago, I uh, was out of the country in a circus, and these clowns lifted me up in the air, and I was dangling, and it tore my rotor cuffs. And I didn't know how bad they were, but over the years, they've gotten progressively worse. And they wanted to do surgery a few times, and I didn't want it. And this last year, I've gotten several cortisone shots, and I just don't want to do it anymore. So my option was surgery or and replacement or the shots every three months or four months. So last Saturday, I was sure I was going to be healed. I was so sure I was going to be healed. And when the service was over, oh, and of course we were praying, and um, what was his name, Chris? Uh, yeah, Sean. Sean, he came by, and he touched my hand, and I went, wow, this is it, this is it. And after service, I still couldn't move my arm. It was, like, horrible. And then on Sunday, uh, I was greeting, and Robert was outside doing security, and the pain was so excruciating that I was crying. And I went out and I asked him, would you please rub my arm? And so he was rubbing it out. And on Monday, I went for two MRIs, and I haven't gotten the results. But Tuesday morning, I was making my bed up. I took the sheets off. I did my bed, and I don't know what I was doing. And I went, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm going, oh my so, amen. amen. So, I just have to tell you, the pain is not completely gone, but I'm going to tell you something. The Word of God says that Jesus does what he sees the Father do. And what is the Father doing? He's laughing at our enemy. So I started laughing when it starts hurting again, because I've been praising and I'm over here. So it is kind of hurting, but I'm going, ha, 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 ha. You are dead, Satan. So have hope. It's not over. Amen. Well, thank you very much. Amen. Yeah, we have to stand in these days, you know? We really do. It's just like, it's a, it's a struggle, but... But we stand for the power of the living God. We welcome the power of the Lord that's present to heal. And um, he's promised that he's coming in that form, and he's going to have a bride without spot and wrinkle. So you're all going to be healed and then become healers, right? Yeah. Freely you receive, freely, freely you give, right? Well, we'll go ahead and receive the offering in just a few moments here. Thank you guys for putting that up. Thank you today for worship and so forth. Yes. Oh, you have some, you have something? Yeah. yeah, come on up. So we'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll pray in just a few moments. If you're giving, you can give by cash, credit card, or online people are doing that as well, and then a check to TGP for short for the gathering place. Amen? Yeah. yeah. Were those verses incredible, the pro prophetic words? Oh, my gosh. Oh. I just felt like uh, you guys are generals. The Lord has so specifically and carefully trained. And as the harvest now starts coming in, man, you are ready. People are going to be blown away by the moving of the Spirit. So, Lord, we thank you for what you've done in secret, what you've done when we've been alone. Amen. What we've done when we've been weeping, what you've done. 
And we thank you, Lord, for the unhindered flow of your glorious Holy Spirit, showing us that you are in our midst and you yourself are speaking to us. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. I mean, every single word. Whoa. And the worship, the praise. Our brother-in-law, Mark Speakman. Where are you, Mark? <laughs> Glorious. Liz on the violin. Thank you, Liz. It's just incredible. Vince, Sandro, Dave came out of the drum cage. Woo! Matthew, dear Matthew on keys. Oh, and Butte. Oh, my gosh. Angela's voice. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Was that everybody? Was there somebody Did else? Did I name everybody? I think I'd actually... There's none oh, in there's there. there's no Kleenex. No, there's none in here. Okay. I had to go look for it. I had, okay. to look, I had to look everywhere. It was such a trial to find it. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah, no, we're good. <laughs> okay. I want to just mention, just, I, I, it seems crazy to even do announcements, but uh, just a couple of announcements that today is our men's and women's fellowship. Woo it's going to yeah. be a blessing, Amen. and the women have a real... Well, I'm sure the men have a special treat. I don't know what it is. Pizza? What are you guys eating? <laughs> okay. But, uh, but the women are getting the famous uh, salad from Green Street in Pasadena. Whoa. That's been brought in. Whoa. Uh, by, ne well, you probably don't even want me to say, but yeah. Tom and Natalie. Natalia, excuse me. I have to say that. Thank you so much. So that's first come, first served, and I think that's $5.00 each you're nodding okay yeah and so really want to encourage you today a special day of fellowship and time together and then i just wanted to say that um beloved betsy um they really seriously need another computer person there's only three of them and uh, betsy is leaving for two weeks to uh, for ministry in Nigeria. A very, a very easy place to go, right? Yeah, yeah right, right. Right in there. I just go, yeah. oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, you celebrated it publicly, so she celebrated her 80th birthday. Oh. Has she slowed down at all? No. <laughs> oh my She's hard to keep up so with. So anyway, she will be gone for two weeks. So we are asking one of you, how about a guy, <laughs> to uh, really just step up to the plate. As long as you, you, know, you know how to do the computer, they will train you for the rest. And uh, if you can't find your way on a Sunday, we won't get mad. Yeah, no, we're very We nice. won't blame you. We never do that. We have great compassion. And so, and it's an easy, I guess it's easy, it's easy. Yeah, she's, she's nodding. It's easy. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, when you get things on time. That's right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Too. yeah. Okay. Have I been late? No, I'm not late. Okay. I'm late? Today? I sent it at 7.30, I thought. Eight. Oh, yeah, no, no. That's the computer. No. <laughs> No, I sent it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That came in late. Okay, that won't happen ever again. So please see Betsy afterwards. We really are in need, and we thank you for stepping up to the plate. Olga, you want to pop up here just as you take a drink here? Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to remind you that next week, next Saturday, the 24th, mm. is our women's lunch in Pasadena at Natalia's house, Natalia and Tom's house. And just to let you know that for those of you that are not sure you're going to be able to make it or you know now that you cannot make it, please let Natalia know immediately. Uh, cut off for uh, RSVPs. Um, that for those of you that have already signed up is this Tuesdays, but if you know ahead of time, let us know uh, Another quick housekeeping kind of um, items Please dress warmly because it's going to be outside No pets 
And um, third thing, ooh. Yeah. What was the other no thing? Children. Oh, no child care. No child care. Okay, so. No what? No child, no child care. care. Yeah. Very good. So that's it. We'll see you there. Thank you. It's going to be great. Can I just say that it's completely full? So if you cannot make it, can I add that? And if you cannot make it, that's another reason we really need to know so we can let women in who want to be part of it. So Amen. it just, boom, Amen. was completely full the first day. So that's a wonderful sign, but we don't want anybody to miss out. So praise God. Okay. Thank you very much. So we'll go ahead and receive the offering in just a moment. First of all, I want to say thank you to everyone who's been... Did, I say, did you already take it? Yeah. Somebody stole it. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Send a, call the police, 911, immediately. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, get your seatbelts fastened. I'm going to go quickly through this. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1, Paul had been talking to them at the end of chapter 5 of... Hebrews, that he said, you know, really I have a hard time talking to you guys because you still need milk. I want you to be able to go on and become mature. And then he starts out here and he says, um, nevertheless, we will go on. Let's go on to maturity. And then he says, not laying again. And he gives the six principles of the uh, doctrines of Christ. And then in verse 6, verse 3, he says, um, that he's going to go on. He says, if God preadventure allows us to go on. So he says, and God permitting, we will do so. But it's sort of a cut up. Uh, he says, and God permitting, we will do so. Do what? What he said at the chapter in verse one. Therefore, let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity. So today I'm going on from the principles uh, uh, that are mentioned, resurrection from the dead, you know, baptism and faith toward God, repentance from dead works, and so forth. And we're going on toward maturity because we're called. The sonship came here. Two words, the sonship came here. Came to our house, actually. And uh, so we're preaching uh, maturity in the Lord because it's only the mature sons and daughters of God, according to Romans 8, that have the image by which they're given the authority to bring healing to fallen creation. Do you hear me? I think I'm a little loud because I'm going to probably get a little louder. I don't want to hurt anybody, but I can hear myself real well. Say what? It's not too loud, but it's echoing or something. So anyway, um, that's much better. So what I want to say is we're going on to maturity, okay? Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary preachings about Christ. And uh, so and he says, we will do that if God permits. And God's permitting. He wants to do that. He wants to teach maturity. It's what we've been doing, been teaching for years, Pam and I both, on how to live in God, which is the way that you actually grow in Jesus. He's the vine. You're the branch. And whether you're, it's a rose bush or whether it's an apricot tree or whether it's a palm tree or whatever, if you were able to ask the branches how they look so good or the oranges how they tasted so good, they would all point back to the tree trunk and the roots. You got it? That's how you become a Christian. That's how you grow as a Christian. You believe and yield to Jesus who is your life. Union with him is the only way that you can come into maturity. Any other doctrines of men are from the devil. It has to be the Lord and the Lord alone. He said, without me, you can do nothing. So I want to just go to Matthew chapter 13 again, 8 and 9. I taught this last week, but this is where we're going. And uh, it says here, still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop. Now, if you remember, there were four different reactions to the heart. God looks at the heart when he rejected David's very handsome older brother, or oldest brother, Eliab, I think is his name, uh, he says, no, I, I've rejected him. And then it says, for I, the Lord, look at the heart, right? And then he says in Revelation 2.22, he says, I'm going to give everyone what has come out of their heart, whether it's good or bad, I'm going to deal with them about what's inside their heart. So that's a big deal. God looks at your heart, just so you know. And um, we're going to deal a little bit with that today about how he deals with your heart 
um, in a really quite beautiful way. So it says here that there were those who heard the word, they didn't understand it, they didn't like it, their heart was hard, Satan immediately stole it. Then there were some that said, woohoo, this is just great. And after a little while, when any pressure comes, any trials come, they have no root in themselves, no real commitment, it, they die. So both of those seeds did not produce anything. Then the next one is, is they're excited about it. Trials and tribulation come, the lust of other things, the desire for other things, the desire for uh, the deceitfulness of riches and all that. It also becomes totally unfruitful. Only those who have a heart or an attitude of heart that allows the scripture to enter in. It says, with meekness, allow the implanted word which is able to save your soul. So I know for sure that I myself have had times I'm like that first person or the first attitude of the heart. Oh no, forget it, you know. Or I'm real happy about that or I'm upset about that one and I I don't receive it. And then the other one and the other one. But then eventually sometimes the Holy Spirit will continue to plow me up and say, look, this was from me. I want you to accept this. I want you to get this. You need to do this or that or whatever. And so yes, we allow the uh, word of God to dwell in us richly and it will produce a crop. Now, I want to show you how this works. Let's go to first, Second uh, Chronicles chapter three, verse one. I think I gave you that. I'm I'm going to say something kind of strange, but I'm I'm going to speak from the threshing floor of Ornon. The threshing floor of Ornon was where Abraham lifted up Isaac. The threshing floor of Ornon is the Temple Mount. The threshing floor of Ornon is what David was able to purchase, and there he built the temple of the living God. Are you with me? So here's, here's the verse. Then Solomon began to build the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to his father David, and also, obviously, uh, you know, Mount Moriah, he, he appeared to Abraham, right? and showed him, I'm the God who provides, right? And he found that ram in the thicket. He appeared to his father, and it was the threshing floor. Uh, the word that I always get, uh, that's his other name, but Ornon, it was the guy's name. And uh, I, w- I want to say this to you. It's the most important thing is, is, is that we get to know the Lord well enough that he's able to put his name on our forehead, especially as we go into these last days, which I'll prove to you, hopefully uh, prove, you'll believe it, check it out yourself, can't preach everything today, that we're in, the, we're in the times of the end times, the end times of the end times. And um, it says here, I want you to just go to there, did I give you Matthew uh, 3, 11 and 12? Now Matthew 3, 11 and 12 is John the Baptist, who there was no one greater born of a woman than John the Baptist. And he said to the people who had come, I baptize you with water for repentance. I can do it down here now. (laughs) I I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Hallelujah. His winnow, oh, the condition. His winnowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his threshing floor which was what it was when Ornon had it. He used it, and a threshing floor is where you'd have something they called like a winnowing fork, and they would throw all the seeds and everything there from the harvest. They would throw them up into the air, and the wind would blow away the chaff, right? That's what God's dealing with your life. Pick up your cross, get rid of the chaff, right? So he says here, his winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear the threshing floor, gathering his wheat. In other words, he's going to lift it up and lift it up and lift it up and lift it up and do it again and again and again until all the chaff is gone. Oh, and what will remain? That, that seed by which he'll plant into hearts that will multiply inside those hearts 30, 60, and 100 times, 100 fold. Not 100%, 100 times. It'll multiply, which I had given you that verse. I don't think I read the whole thing. Anyway, uh, his winning fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. What does that mean? Exactly what it said. It's a very serious issue. And he does it on the Temple Mount. He builds his temple naturally and spiritually 
by what he's telling you right here. John said that. You got that? You got that? You really have it. Okay. Now, if you go back to Matthew 13 again, 8 and 9, I didn't read all of that. Another seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop of 160 or 30 times what was sown. I think the next verse says, he that hath an ear, doesn't it? Whoever has ears, let them hear. And uh, so he was saying very clearly, Jesus, I sow seed. I get the seeds from my threshing floor, and they are the DNA of God. I was the seed of Abraham, and I went into the soil, and I died according to John chapter 12, and I will bring forth many other seeds like me. Same DNA. We're not adopted were planted with the DNA and the seed of God, the sperm of God, Peter says, in 1 Peter 1, 23, 22 and 23. It's planted in there, and it's the DNA of God that what would bring forth what? Sons and daughters of God, mature sons and daughters of God. That's God's plan. It's always been that way. When you're born again, you're born as a child. You get to be hopefully conformed into his image. But Paul told the Galatians, you know, uh, Christ isn't even formed in you. I'm in travail again until Christ be formed in you. So it's a process by which you really go through a lot. Now, last week, Pam got a lot of positive feedback, and I'm glad she did, but she basically taught you and confirmed to you the difficulties that we're all going through, okay? But let me just tell you this, that at times it feels like all hell's breaking loose. Everything that can go wrong seems to go wrong. Never, no one ever knows what I'm talking about, right? But you know what I'm saying. At least it feels that way. It isn't all hell because he's going all over the place. The devil is. But the Bible says that even though hell comes against you, he says that the gates of hell will not prevail. Got it? But it's not that they don't come. Oh, no. Whether it's whatever. It can be all kinds of stuff. But God uses it all for his glory. But he said, I'm giving you authority. I'm giving you authority on this earth over those gates of hell. That's what he's saying to us today. So I just want to look uh, briefly at Colossians 1.27. Colossians 1.27, Paul says, The mystery of Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's a future expectation that the Lord has. In 1 John 5, 4, it says, He that is born of God overcomes the world. This is a victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Well, faith is given to you by God. Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 1, he says, Those of you that have obtained like precious faith with us, it's imparted to you by God. It's part of the fruit of the Spirit. That same faith, it's only the faith of God only. It's not my faith, it's not your faith growing, it's his faith in you being given a place to grow and to overtake, to do what? Well, he used it to create the universe. He can certainly take care of your needs, right? But your eyes are to be on Jesus who is the what? Author and what? Finisher, or could we say alpha and omega of everything that goes on? And by the way, it's alpha and omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's there all along the way. You need to be in union with him for him to bring you into an omega season, a maturity season. Does that make sense? Should be very clear. It's very simple, but it's a mystery. So he plants himself inside you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's exactly what he does, and that's what he's going to do. And Colossians 3.10 says this. It says, and it lines up to me, which I've been preaching for years, that uh, in the beginning, God gave Adam and Eve authority and dominion because he created them in his what? Image. Image. The image of Christ is being grown inside of you. Oh. Then to them... To them, God has chosen to make known, this is 127. I wanted to go to 310. The glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. But in Colossians 310, it says this. It says that you are being renewed in the image of your creator. You hear me? You are being renewed. Christ is being formed, and that image of God is being formed in you. That's what he's saying. That's what he's doing. Now, the Holy Spirit has a big part for that and have put on the new self, which is what? Being what? The new self, the new self is Christ in you, the hope of glory. What's it, what's it in the process of being? Renewed or growing. Is that true? Okay, just so you know. 
and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge of the image of its creator. So Jesus Christ is wanting to go on into maturity with us, have a remnant that's going to be mature, that his image will be fully formed in them, and they can have dominion on the earth. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Okay, so it's happening here. It's happening in our church. It's been going on for a long, long time for many of us. More, of, Some of us are farther along that road than others. But the sonship actually came to our house, and I'm proclaiming it to you today. Just tell you, that's a mystery, but it's okay. So I'm, I'm, but I, I believe that we're to be preaching from the threshing floor where the temple of God is being made. Now, I'll say this here. I want us to look at Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. And I want to say that chapter 5 is before chapter 6. Isn't that something? <laughs> My wife said it's brilliant. That's right. <laughs> Somebody? Anyway, it says here that he purchased us for himself by his, his own blood. Revelation, maybe I didn't, I probably didn't give it to her. Revelation 5.10. So I'll just tell you what it says. It says that he redeemed us by his own blood. And then the translation usually is uh, incorrect. But it says, and he has made us a kingdom of priests. It's not that at all. He's made us singular kings and priests. Or plural in the sense that it's the word kings. So it's, I have put on the new self. Anyway, it goes on to say that. This is what I want you to get. That happens to be before chapter 6. Are you ready? When Jesus Christ tells his angels... Let it out. The wrath of God, the plagues of God come upon the earth. Did you hear me? You need to read it. Okay. Now, let me say this. That he is having a people who will rule and reign. Look, at it's wrong here in the NIV again. You have made them to be a kingdom. It's the word king and priest to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. Next verse is, He's up there, or excuse me, just prior to that, it shows him getting, as it were, the ability as the Lamb of God to begin to pour out the righteous judgments of God upon the earth. That's the beginning of chapter 5. At the end of chapter 5, he says that. Chapter 6, it all starts, right? Does that make sense? It all starts. Now listen to this. I want to go to uh, Matthew 24, 34. In Matthew 24, 34, Jesus tells them, from the beginning of him talking about a time coming, and you can read the whole thing. I'm not going to read it today. But you can read the whole context of this whole situation. And it starts basically uh, up at uh, chapter uh, 24, starting at 21. He talks about his second coming. You're hearing me. He talks about a time of trouble that he would shorten the days for the elect's sake. By the way, you're the elect of God, okay? So according to scriptures, many scriptures, right? This, this elect people will go through the tribulation, see the second coming of Jesus Christ, right? And then it says here that this generation who sees these things will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. There'll be a generation of people that see the Antichrist come forth. This is all 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and chapter 2. It makes it very clear. Paul's saying the same thing Jesus did. He said, you'll see the Antichrist, you'll see the great falling away, but you will be people who will be marveled at, for the Lord will come and glorify himself inside of people, 2 Thessalonians 1.10. So what we're dealing with is something, and I'm going to bring it really to a close now, honey. I want us to go to chapter 3 of Revelation. I wanted you to see these things. That Jesus goes on to talk to this church and he says to them, I have the key of David. He says that to him who is, has this, 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 who ha holds the key of David. Just so you know, Jesus has the key of David. A lot of people think they have the key of David and so forth. They don't have the key of David. Jesus has the key of David. And this is what he says to them. I'm going to open up doors for you that no man can shut. I'm going to shut doors for you that no man can open. I am using the key of David in the behalf of you people. That's what he's saying. Now, it's available to all the seven churches, but this is, the, this is the one that qualifies and why. There were several things that this church did. Jesus holds the keys of the kingdom, or the kingdom of David. 
You are able, he's opening doors up into your destiny individually and corporately for a people who live, if we're living here, continuing to live here, in LA. It'll be a corporate vision for this city and beyond. And it says he will open doors. It's into your personal destiny, into the destiny and the calling of this city. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works which he hath before ordained. Those works that he has ordained for you to do before you were created are extremely amazing and awesome. But you have to qualify. You can do little works here. You can do things, things, things. But the ones that are ordained with, with real eternal purpose, your character has to catch up with your calling. That's what, it, that's what he's telling us here. So let me just read, read a few things. It says here, I will open up doors that no man can shut. It says here uh, that he says in chapter 3 to these folks, he basically says this. He says, um, you know, uh, I ha you have kept my word and not denied my name. Now, that's going to be a big deal. It says here, I know your deeds in verse 8. You'd have to ju jump down, sorry. In, in verse 8, 9, and so forth, he goes on to say there that he says, I know what you guys have been doing. He says, you have what? Not denied my name. You have a little strength. You have kept my word and not denied my name. The church is having a real hard time being faithful to Jesus in a Hollywood Los Angeles culture because we don't want to say bad stuff. We're, we're kind of a little bit embarrassed to have to say, you know. That you can't get to heaven doing that. The church is compromising big time. And uh, woe to them and woe to the shepherds. They may find the blood of people on their hands. So we just preach the word, sometimes with tears, sometimes just straight out, but we cannot deny his name. Keep going on down. He goes on to say here, the next thing he says, you have kept my word, not denied my name. And then he says, uh, I will make those, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars, I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. There's a lot of Satanists that think they're Christians. They say it. Look how they dress. Not quite happening. What is all this? Well, what is a Jew? What is a Jew, Pastor? Well, we have to go to Romans 2, 28 and 20, 29, which I don't think I gave you, so I'll just tell you. He says, look, at this is what a Jew is. <clears throat> is not, a Jew is not someone outwardly. It's someone inwardly. Here, let me just read it. Uh, a man is not a Jew if he is only one outwardly, nor is circumcision merely outward and physical. No, here it is. A person is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is from the heart by the Spirit, not by the written code. Such a person's praise is not from other people, but from God. So he's saying these people are uncircumcised. He's saying that they're of the synagogue of Satan. He's saying that I'll make them bow down. I'll keep moving on. Now he goes on to say here, since you have kept my word, he says, right? And my command to what? Endure. See, that's what Pam was encouraging you to do last night. Listen, I'm telling you the, the steps up the ladder of Jacob for an open heaven. Pam preached to encourage you. You have to endure patiently. What? what you have to endure patiently. <laughs> Sorry. It's breakthrough. Um, we'll see. You know. I, I, I was saying, I remember back in the 90s, I'd say, you know, I think we need to quit saying breakthrough. I think people are being, uh, what's the word, abused by that word. Every, every year for a while, there was, every year's a breakthrough. I, thought, I don't think we should say that anymore, man. <laughs> I don't think we should say it. I don't think, I don't, in fact, I don't even think it's God, to be honest with you, bro. Uh, anyway, so it goes on to say, um, he says that they are, you know, uh, kept my word. Now watch this. I will what? Keep you from what? The hour of trial that's coming, that comes upon the what? The whole earth. To what? To test the what? Of the what? So it says the whole world and the whole earth. What could that possibly be? Does anybody know what that could possibly be? Oh, it's a great tribulation, ding dong. That's what it is, right? 
Jesus said in, in John 17, 15, he says, Father, I don't pray that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. So these people are going to be protected. Now listen carefully, and I'm closing now. Last week, I told you that according to the first church mentioned, that if you fully return and stay in your first love with Jesus, he said, he said, you know, you have to do these things. You have to find out who false apostles are. You have to return to your first love and all this. And then he says at the end, to he that overcomes, you will eat of the tree of life. What does that mean, you will eat of the tree of life? According to Revelation chapter, excuse me, according to Genesis chapter 3, he had to take the tree of life out of the garden because if Adam and Eve ate it, they would live forever in a fallen state. Amen. So this is real because he's dealing with people who are going to go through a very difficult time. It's the rest of the stuff in that, Bible, in that last word. And he tells them, if your first love, if you obey the first love, through all the trials that you're going through, all the disappointments you're going through, and you still make me your first love, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to have you eat of the tree of life, and you will not die in this day that I'm telling you about. You'll not die. Oh, my gosh. Well, it's what he said, so it's not me. Jesus said that. That's, I, I'm only telling what he did. So I'll, I'll uh, go on and, and leave it at this. It is so important that we seek the face of Jesus. Let me just finish, and I'm really going to finish on this one. In, it, says, it says in Matthew 5, 8, the pure in heart will see God. I found out last week. The word pure means to be clean and so forth, but because of the, um, the man who uh, zeroes Zahates, he said, what? Zuliates? Thank you very much. <laughs> Zuliates, Zadiates. I, I can't even pronounce your name right, and it's easy, you know. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> he says it's similar to another Greek word, which you couldn't announce, pronounce either, and it's simply this. It has to go back to the kind of cleansing that someone, and purification, that happens when something is violently tossed back and forth and is winnowed. So a pure of heart. I want a pure heart, Lord. Okay, get in the washing machine. Oh my God. You know? That's exactly what it is in the Greek. Woo! I'm done. Aren't you glad? I'm done. <laughs> okay, that's it. Yeah. Okay, there's a lot more. but Anyway, I'll tell you more about the face of God next week if I'm allowed to speak. <laughs> okay, praise the Lord. Yeah. There I am, thank you. So good to see each one of you. You know, last week when we were in the cry um, all day, from nine to, I think 9, we almost 30. went nine. But in between, he'd have us jump up and go like this. <laughs> So I'm very tempted to do that to you. Get the blood going. We had to do it right, left, a circle. Anyway, next week we'll do that. So bring your, wear your tennis shoes. Pam, Pam does it every morning now. Every morning she does it. I haven't gotten involved. Do not. Oh my. I don't know what to say. He's lying. <laughs> I do not do that. Yeah, you made that up. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Want this? This is, this is just going to be a few minutes. I think it's going to be a series. It's going to be on rest and the Sabbath of God, which I fail miserably in, so this is to me as well. I'm never preaching from a place of having it together, ever. Yeah, ever. That's why you're so popular. <laughs> but from needing it desperately, and this is what he's been talking to us about, and I found it very interesting that last week, on the cry training, which again was nine to nine, here's the booklet. That's crisis response, uh, response training. For those of you who wonder what am I talking about. Uh, 
to how to uh, respond to disasters. So all this, you know, I mean, was tremendous with incredible stories, but I was fascinated with how much he talked about self-care. And he called some, uh, uh, the way you can become compassion fatigue. That's when you have just sustained issues that seem to not get resolved. And I found that so interesting. And the Lord's been uh, personally talking to me about my schedule. And... Rick and I have been dealing with it in our marriage. But here's the deal. The Lord wants us rested. It is possible. It says he leads us beside speeding freeways. Does he? No. Where does he lead us? And green. And he knows right where they are. We don't, and uh, my walk has been taking a step forward and several steps back and a step forward as we learn how to live life daily. This is, you know, this is, and so anyway, I just want to read a quote here from the crisis response training. Self-care includes self-examination. So it's, uh, for all of us, the Holy Spirit is knocking, going, hey, I, 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 I have the means to have you more rested, to have you more at peace in your soul, to not have a scattered mind. He's really been dealing with the scattering of my mind, and that comes which I'm not even going to teach this, but there's a verse in Luke that says the cares of this life weigh down the heart. That word cares, the concerns of daily life, weighs down. That word cares literally means to divide, to scatter our minds. And so there's so much. We honestly were never made to... I think have the kind of technology that we have with the cell phones, the texting, the emails, the constant 24-7 media input that you can have. And so we have a lot that we have to resist and limit in our lives, but the Holy Spirit is totally intent on showing us each individually how we enter into that rest. So I'm just going to touch just the tip of it today. Um, and then we're, I think we're, this is something he wants us to really talk about. Um, here's another quote from Sh the Sean Malone, the cry training. Self-care is not selfish. It's strategic. Amen. It's absolutely necessary. Because what does it say in Daniel that the enemy is going to do? Wear out the saints. Wear out the saints. So that, that means a process. That means we're going along. It's okay. Oop. It's not okay. Oop. And then it gets harder and harder. And then we enter into what Sean Malone called compassion fatigue. Where then we blame ourselves for not caring enough. When honestly, we're worn out. I think a lot of the time, we are saying we're being attacked by the enemy when we are simply making poor choices to, to lead a healthy life. It's hard. It sounds so, well, of course I want to lead a healthy life. But it's hard. Because that's the tactic of the enemy. The enemy is after your heart to harden it. The Holy Spirit is after your heart to pour oil on you and to make you tender. But then it's hard also to live in this world in a tender way. So let's just look at, I've only got probably two verses we're going to look at. Uh, Proverbs 4.23, we all know this, but we need to see it again. Uh, 
this is amazing, above all else, above all else, more than anything else, okay? Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do f flows from it. That's an astounding statement, more than anything else. And what, it, what it's saying, who's, who's supposed to guard our hearts? Above all else, you guard your heart. The, the Lord can only do so much if we are consistently making choices that are not healthy for us. And so I just want to unpack this just a minute here. Another translation says, with all diligence, guard your heart. Diligence is consistency. It's continual. It's daily, day in and day out. This isn't like, okay, I've taken a pill now and I'm fine for two, you know, two weeks. Our heart has to be constantly guarded through choices. I wish it was easier. You know, when you were little, and I watch my little three and four year old grandkids, mommy makes the decisions. Feeds you good food, hopefully. Changes your diaper, gets you in the bathtub, whether you wanna go or not. But as we get older, the choices come down to us. Uh, and then it says, another translation, with the utmost care, guard your heart, for it determines the course of your life. Oh my goodness. The, to the degree that you are guarding your heart, doing, living self-care as a valid and critical need, especially in this hour, to that degree, our life will be determined. So above all else, I mean, I read that so flippantly. This is the main thing. It says, uh, guard your heart, here's another translation. Guard your heart more than anything else because the source of your life flows from it. Okay. So if we're being told to do that, and it's not a suggestion, if we're being told to do that, then he, Holy Spirit, will give us everything we need to live that way. But I think a key is we have to take small steps, focus on just a few things. And it's also, I'm just going to bring it up because I was listening to it. I don't know how many of you are familiar, probably all of you, with health seminars or any kind of seminar. You can watch it free uh, for the first, you get it for a day, it's free. Anybody, I've been on an 11-part series on brain health. Do you know there's 55 million people with Alzheimer's worldwide? 55 million And the doctors are saying that 90, I think it was 95, but I'll say 90% is lifestyle driven. And the things that they're talking about are all totally scriptural. The Lord has it all covered. But the, like the three main things, what you eat, you are what you eat. What we put in our mouths fashions our brain. So the one guy said, just ask yourself throughout the day, what, um, is this healthy for my brain? It's what you eat, it's sleep, and I'm not going to teach this, but it's sleep. So for me personally, I thought I could stay up. And if you stay up to a certain point, if you're like me, you get a second wind. So then you stay up. Sleep, they're saying, and they, you know, if you watch 
these experts, they can tell you everything now that's going on in the different uh, stages of sleep and your brain is literally cleansing itself. So it's critical that we, this is what God made. This is why mom was right. This is why my three-year-old grandson takes a nap every day and wakes up, boom, ready to go. Why he has so much energy? Because he's sleeping. No one's immune from this. This is how we were made. We have a creator and he made us a certain way and he wants us to heed the way we live and, and self-examine ourselves, which takes time. Um, just lost my thought. Oh, and then the, uh, the other way is um, what you eat, sleep, exercise, and here's, they said this is biggie, 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 community. Whoa. That is built into a church. And you don't have community, and I know there's certain people that struggle physically and stay home, but you do not have community viewing church through a screen. Just gonna say it. It's easier, but we're, you're missing out on a critical thing. I know we all have reasons. I don't want, it's not guilt. It's just watch, just examine maybe that aspect of your life. Okay. I'm going to actually stop here soon. Genesis 2, 2, it's Genesis 2, 2. This is just, this is a talking about creation. So by the seventh, seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. God was working, doing all the creating. So on the seventh day, what did he do? From all his work, God had to rest. Why do we think we don't have to? It's just, I just, and then I'm just going to admit, this was a bomb for me. I didn't even realize it. Exodus 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. It doesn't say it's for you even. It's to spend time with him. And then it goes on and talks about everybody should do this, even the animals, the servants. This is, do you know where this is? This is in the Ten Commandments. I had completely forgotten that. This is one of the Ten Commandments. You shall rest. He's commanding it that we have a day where we stop our labor and we spend time resting, whatever that means. You have to ask the Lord, what does that mean? It got so legalistic, you know, with the Pharisees that they wouldn't even help an animal if it fell in a pit. I mean, it got ridiculous. So it's nothing about legalism, it's, and it's about growing in having a day, which I hope I'm going to teach more on because I really need this. But it just goes on. Can you go to verse... Well, that is 10. Okay, go to verse 11, Betsy. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. So he's got resting up with do not commit adultery, do not murder, What's the other ones here in the Ten Commandments? No other gods before me. Do not steal. That's the Ten. Resting is in that. It's one of the Ten Commandments. And I think it was that didn't they have to wander in the wilderness for every year, 40 years, they did not keep the Sabbath. So there's a penalty to it. It actually says in Exodus 
uh, 3515. Why don't we go there and then I, I am done. Uh, sorry, Exodus 35, I'm uh, sorry, 3115. Sorry. Thank you. For six days work is to be done, but the seventh day is a day of Sabbath rest. Holy to the Lord, whoever does any work on the Sabbath day is to be put to death. Now, here's the deal. Obviously, he's not talking about putting us to death now. We're doing it ourselves. Thank you. That was my point. You want an immediate death or a slow death? 55 million people have dementia. They say it'll triple by 2050. I didn't mean it to be this serious. It is serious, though. I was like, it's in the Ten Commandments. The Isra- Listen, to, look at this. The Israelites are to observe the Sabbath, celebrating it, celebrating it, celebrating it for the generations to come as a lasting covenant. Look at this. It will be a, this is the last thing that God is saying to Moses on Mount Sinai. This is the last thing. This is what he's ending when he wrote the Ten Commandments with his finger on stone and the whole mountain shaking and the Israelites are freaked out down below. It will be a sign between me and the Israelites forever for in six days The Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. One more verse. When the Lord finished speaking to Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him the two tablets of the covenant law, the tablets of stone inscribed by the finger of God. I just thought God was suggesting, Pam, you you really need to look at your lifestyle. No, he commands it because he wants us to live long on this earth and have full use of all of our faculties and to be healthy. Gosh. Okay, <laughs> you're just sitting there kind of. <laughs> it, that's what I was doing. Okay, so no one can set your boundaries. It's ultimately you. It's up to you to make healthy Choices, but we're going to talk about some of them as we go through this. We ask the Holy Spirit to help us, and my part of what he's dealing, and believe me, I hardly watch any news, anything besides HGTV, (laughs) or half. Well, no, I watch it a half an hour off and on. I love HGTV. (laughs) It's home decorating TV or whatever it stands for. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. What it's Rick doesn't watch it. He sometimes he'll come over. Who won? Who 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 won the contest? (laughs) Oh, that young couple did. They built the best house. Anyway, okay. Okay. So um, I don't even know what I was saying, but we're. uh, Oh, how serious this is. So he's going to help us, okay? So Lord, dear Jesus, thank you for caring about us, for caring about our minds, for not getting sick of us, for making bad choices, for constantly coming like the most wonderful mother and saying, you're not, no, 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 you're not doing it right. I want to help. I want to help. I'm going to help you. I don't want you sick. Amen. I want your immune system healthy. So, Lord, I just thank you, and I, I, I thank you that you are going to heal sickness. You're going to heal us. You're going to heal scattered minds. I felt today we were just inhaling during worship. 
breathing in his life, breathing in his joy. And so, Lord, I just thank you for a release of hope, not condemnation. None of us are doing this well. So, Lord, thank you for caring and for quickening now. You're, going, you're the Alpha and you're the Omega. And you kind of woke us up today or confirmed things to us today. And so you're going to walk this out with us and complete this inside us. And so we thank you for that. That's the takeaway. You lead us beside still waters and into green pastures. Amen. So Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. 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 Amen, Lord. Thank you. Well, I'm going to repent, okay, publicly, and maybe you can repent too. We all owe it to our body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit, to care for it. Is that true? Yes. And uh, so I'm just going to say this, because the Lord's been dealing with Pam and I about this off and on for years. You know, I like that. And, uh, Amen. So, that was a so total I, confirmation. I exactly. I, Lord, I'm I'm truly repenting. Pam and I have been going through a process of repenting. Got to cut this out. Got to do this. Got to quit doing that. It's not like we're doing something terrible, but you know, eating well, we do pretty good and so forth on things. But it's a matter of the clutter of me personally, of how so many things I'm doing at times, and that's. My, one of my big issues. So anyway, Lord, I just pray today for all of us. Anybody want to pray, pray about this? You all need to. <laughs> you know. And uh, so, Lord, no condemnation, but I'm asking. Let's do this. Let's say, Father, we heard your word. We heard your word. Thank you for your word. We receive it. Now, Holy Spirit, help us. Help us. You're the helper. I need help. I want to receive it from you. I thank you, Jesus, for praying for me and bring, being the great true vine that I can yield to and you will come into me. As you said, those who believe in you out of their innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Help me to obey and have a Sabbath yes. for the glory of your name and for the healing of my own body. Amen to that? You know, I think so. you know we want to be realistic too. You know, just start with seeking him, asking him, you know, yeah. what, what, what do I need to do? Help me today. And so we're, we're, we're very basic. Right now, for us, it's... Um, Sleep, get in bed by 10. I'm just telling you, I'm not, this is not a rule at all. I'm just saying, I, I can't, you can't change everything at once. So the idea is to take small steps. So for me personally, and then I, yeah, telling him as well, Absolutely. we need to sleep more. I think sometimes, and I think the, the Holy Spirit's going to get at motives that drive us. What's driving me? Why, can I, why can't I rest more? And I, I feel like he's showing me personally, here I go again, true confession, but that I feel important when I'm busy <laughs> and worn out even. Yeah, really. It's ridiculous. Boy, I'm suffering Thank for you. Jesus. Yeah, wow, I'm needed. Lights. Boy, yeah. I'm yeah. needed. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, really Sean said, don't get sucked into the vacuum of needs. <laughs> no, and think that, you, that people can't do it without you. Yes. Oh, yeah, that was the other one. So for us right now, it's sleep. <laughs> we're going to work on a day off. So we're going to probably put it. We've even got Marnie and Jenny on us going, we're going to talk to you about this. So they're talking to us tomorrow about this so we can be accountable uh, to some of that. Because it just, we all do it. Amen, amen. We all do it. And then the last thing was that at least I'm working on, I, I haven't even talked to you about it. Can, well, no, we did. It's going to make me nervous. What? 
<laughs> no, so, confined texting. Confine it into certain times of the day. Put the phone away. Put the phone away. I mean, it's become ridiculous. When I take it into the bathroom with me, I'm sorry. That's getting ridiculous. Not that I do that, but I do do it some of the time. Who knows? Anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now free to move around. Say hello to somebody. Prove that you're nice by <laughs> saying some hi to somebody. Thank you. God bless Thank you, you all. For Thank laughing. you. The Gathering Place.